You know, I'm going to share a Days of Lot alert with you this morning. You know, as always, I'd like to remind you what the purpose of these are. You know, a Days of Lot alert, the reason I do this is because I want you to be able to you know, look at the Word of God, look at the world around you, and get a gauge regarding the season that we live in. You know, Jesus said, you know, as we approach the end of days, you know, as we're living in the last days, the world would look like it did uh, in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. Um, you know, it was a very wicked, you know, uh, part of uh, world history. You know, people were all about themselves, self-serving, uh, self-pleasure. I mean, pleasure of, of things more than love of God. Uh, and certainly, as you look at the world that we're living in today, I mean, it, it looks actually not just identical to the days of Noah and the days of Lot. Uh, I believe it's, it's worse. Um, but this morning, I, I want to talk about our, our kids, our, our duty and our responsibility to the children uh, that God has entrusted, you know, to put in our care. Uh, I think always the best place to start is in the Word of God. So uh, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6, we are told, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he, he will not depart. And so we have a, a, a command there, train up a child in the way he should go, and then we also have a promise, when he is old, he will not depart from it. That doesn't mean that you know, your children will walk with the Lord all the days of their lives. It simply means that if we're faithful to train them in the ways of the Lord, that God will be faithful to, to meet them in the way, you know, all the days of their lives. Fact is, um, you know, my parents trained me up in the ways of the Lord from a, a very young age. Uh, I spent my years running from the Lord, from His calling on my life. Uh, my parents continued to pray for me uh, through that entire process. And um, man, God was, was faithful. I'm telling you, in some of the worst situations, like I would have Sunday school songs like ringing in my head. No kidding. Like, you want to know the benefit of Sunday school? You know, ministering to children, that sticks with them all of their lives. That, that, the truth that we can impart to them. Well, in, in this text, train up a child in the way he should go. Uh, when he is old, he will not depart from it. There are, there are two words there in the English language, train up, and they, they speak clearly to the call that the Lord has placed on us as, as parents and as grandparents. This isn't just for parents. When you become a grandparent, there is also a call on your life to be uh, a witness to, to your children and your grandchildren. Read 2 Timothy. You know, Paul, in writing to Timothy, was like, hey man, I see the love of God in you, you know, which I first saw in your grandmother and, and in your mother. Now, now I see in you. There was a, a legacy of faith that had been imparted to Timothy, and it was through those in his life that poured into him. Okay, the, the two words there, train up, in the, in the Hebrew, it's one word, and the word is hanak. Okay, and, and the word means to dedicate, specifically to, to initiate, you know, to, to cause to begin is what that means, to, to discipline and to instruct. That's all, that's all found within the, the definition of the Hebrew word hanak there. Now, we actually only find this word, you know, hanak, uh, for train up. We, we only find it in three other places in the entire Old Testament. And every one of those, interestingly, do a word study on this yourself later, but every one of those is actually in reference to the Lord's house. It's in reference to something that he already possesses, to something that is his, which, by the way, is also true of our children. Now, you hear me quote this all the time, Psalm 127.3, Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. You see, the, the children in, in our homes, and, and you have to hear this, they're on loan to us. My kids, is, as, as much as I uh, love them and appreciate that God has you know, brought them into my life, I, I am also uh, very aware that they are on loan to my wife and I, that, that one day we're going to stand before the Lord and give an account on how we, we, we poured into His possession, His children. Now, fact is, I've I've dedicated uh, quite a few days of lot alerts to, to kids, to our kids, to, you know, the way that Satan likes to come at them, the, the, the manner in which he's trying to not just attack them, but steal them away. Um, you know, gosh, you probably remember I, I've done days of lot alerts on, uh, like, uh, the 
drag queen uh, story hours that go on in libraries. I think I have a slide of one of those. You know, you, this was actually uh, one in, in Washington, uh, D.C., but um, they, they, they've been all over Iowa. You know, they're inviting uh, drag queens into the public libraries and schools now to, to read books to children. Actually, this article tells us Pride Month saw a spike in drag queen events for children. Why? Does that make any sense to you? Do you know why? Well, I, I actually included that in, in one of my previous uh, Days of Lot Alerts as well. You remember the, the, the video that I showed you, the uh, San Francisco Gay Men's Choir? You know, what, what they stated, what their goal is? Play that, just a brief portion of it really quickly. We got no audio there. Why don't you start that over? All right, kill it. I mean, they're not hiding their agenda. We're coming for them. We're coming for your children. Is anybody else bothered by that? Has anybody else just felt like kind of had to move around your seat a little bit? I should see more hands. Um, that really, that, that gets under my skin. I mean, how the world is so blatantly throwing it in our faces that, that they are coming for our children. And if you don't think that's true, you're not paying attention to the world that you live in. You're not paying attention to the Word of God in, in regard to what He said the world would look like in the days before He would call His church home. Now, today I, I wanted to, to draw your attention to a school board member, actually a school board director uh, in the state of Washington. Her name is Jen Mason. Has anybody heard this story? This is a big part of uh, the problem in our uh, society today. These kinds of things aren't being talked about, uh, but they're actually not very hard to find if you just look. You see, Jen is the school board director for the Bellingham School District in Washington State, um, and she is uh, also the owner of a sex shop in Washington in the community of Bellingham. Anybody else have a problem with that? Somebody who's on the school board? More hands now. Good for you guys. Um, so yeah, thank you for the double of hands. Uh, Somebody who is on a school board, who is the director of a school board, should that somebody also own the local sex shop in town? Uh, and I keep using the, the, the term sex shop because that's the way she describes it uh, in her own literature on her social media accounts. Um, and and the, the, the shop is called Wink Wink. Now, recently, again, this, this school board director announced that she's going to be teaching children classes at her shop Okay, parents are going to be bringing their children to the sex shop in Bellingham, Washington from 9 years old to 17 years old. You know what the, the title of the classes are? You can probably see it here. Sexual pleasure. 9 years old? Even 17 years old. If I find out somebody's talking to my 17-year-old about something like that, I'm coming for you, you know? I mean, that's, that's the kind of parent I am. I don't take that kind of thing lightly. But nine years old, the, the interesting thing is you, the parents were signing up for this in droves. I want to read a little bit. It's probably hard for you to see that. I'm going to read a little bit of this to you. A Washington State school board director who owns a sex shop in, is making headlines after announcing she will teach sex education classes for children as young as nine years old on topics such as sexual anatomy for pleasure, safer sex practices for all kinds of sexual activities, the classes for 9 to 12 year olds is an introduction to topics related to relationships, puberty, bodies, sexuality. Does anybody think that this is something this person should be teaching children? No, the answer is no. We focus on what makes healthy versus unhealthy friendships and romantic relationships. Does anybody think this person is capable of teaching that? No. <laughs> uh, the science of how puberty works, consent, personal boundaries, defining sex, again, not something these people are capable of, discussing why people may or may not choose to engage in certain types of sexual activities. Jen Mason, owner of sex shop Wink Wink in Bellingham and school board director, told uh, radio host Jason Rance. Mason announced there's going to be four three-hour classes Four three-hour classes? Parents are turning their children over to this person four different times for three hours at a time, held at her sex shop, uh, and the event is being billed as the Uncringe Academy. In the classes, Mason will teach 
Uh, they'll be broken down by age from 9 to 12 years old and then from 13 to 17 years old. Church, does anybody else think we need to get back to the basics here in, in this country? Does anybody else think that, that wokeism has uh, absolutely torn away at the fabric of society and that we as a nation, if, if we don't stand up soon, we won't be able to stand up at all? We're giving our kids away. They've, they, they've declared their, their goal, they're coming for your children. And just because this is happening across the country, don't think that, that it's not going to be knocking at your doorstep any minute, okay? Anything that you see happening somewhere else, somebody is trying to do in your own community, okay? Again, if you don't think that's true, go ahead and hide your head in the sand. But, but remember, what is it, the ostrich that thinks it can do that, you know? It'll put its little head into the dirt and the rest of its entire body is out there for whatever wants to come and take it. And I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm just not willing to live my life that way. The church shouldn't be willing to let the world decay around us that way. We've got to get back to the basics. We've got we to do what we can to teach our kids right from wrong. Amen. Do you think it's our responsibility? Raise your hand if you think it's your responsibility to teach your kids and your grandkids right from wrong. Your responsibility. Now, raise your hand if you think it's a local sex shop owner's. Okay, very good. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page here, you know. We are charged to protect our children and our grandchildren from the perverseness of this world. And if we don't, man, we're going we're gonna to stand before the Lord someday soon, and we're going to give an account for that. We're going to give an account for why we didn't stand up. I'm going to read this to you again. I'm going to remind you of this. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. In the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child. Put your energy and your effort. It's not easy to train something. Anybody ever tried to train a dog to do something? Now put 10,000 times more effort in. 100,000 times more effort in. If you don't put in the effort, don't be surprised with the result. Amen?